Training camp is just a few day, or a few weeks, a few days. I wish it was a few days. A yeah. few weeks away for the Atlanta Falcons starts on July 27th. So yeah, just just about three weeks. And we're going to talk about offense, defense, beginning with the offense, the biggest questions this team faces. And this is going to be probably the most exciting training camp and exciting preseason we ever witnessed. New coach, Michael Penix, Kirk Cousins, excitement around Zach Robinson, question marks about the defense and Jimmy Lake and Raheem Morris and how they're going to handle this. Not a very talented unit and make them, you know, confident because that's what we were last year with, you know, Pretty much the same group under Ryan Nielsen, who did a fantastic job. So can they live up to what he left behind? Offensively, though, where are the biggest questions you think, or what is the big, biggest concern for you about this Falcons offense? I don't really know if if I could pinpoint one. It's going to be kind of an arbitrary you know, concern, and it's really, you know, the Zach Robinson, Kirk Cousins offense, that trio, like how are those three going to mesh? How is Zach Robinson going to implement his system, best utilize our weapons, Bajon Robinson, Kyle Pitch, Drake London, Darnell Mooney, uh, and how is he going to, you know, acclimate Kirk Cousins to all that? So not only does he have to obviously learn how to be an offensive coordinator for the first time. He's never called plays. He's also dealing with a quarterback that he has never worked with. And he's also being tasked with maximizing our top 10 picks the past three years or past prior to this year. So I think that's it. That trio, Zach Robinson, Kirk Cousins, and then our three offensive weapons. How is that going to look? Because, you know, we need to hit the ground running because as we've talked about at length, uh, the first part of the Falcon schedule is brutal. And it, and, it, and it's not the fact that we're facing Pat Mahomes. Like, the Chiefs' defense is good. The Steelers' defense is great. The so, Eagles. yeah. So, uh, that's the thing I'm most concerned about. Just how quickly are those three pieces going to mesh together? Yeah, I think that's a good a good point because I think a lot of people think, all right, Kirk Cousins is coming in. That's obviously a huge upgrade of what you had at quarterback. Then you have Zach Robinson, who we think is going to be a huge upgrade over Arthur Smith, even though I think we all agree Arthur Smith wasn't as bad as a lot of people make him out to be. He just didn't have a quarterback. But we're expecting with these two guys for everything to just seamless transition and them to just be fantastic. You got a first-year offensive coordinator, a quarterback who's never worked with this offensive Coming coordinator. Coming off an Achilles injury. Yeah, and you go back to, I mean, and, and yeah, you're right. I mean, how much work is he going to have in the offseason with the, his receivers, with his new weapons, with his new offensive coordinator? Like, how prepared? Is he going to be ready, like you said, to hit the ground running like we need to? Because not only do we need to hit the ground running against tough defenses, we play some good offenses and our defense isn't that good. So we're going to have to score some points. So we ain't going to win a lot of games against the Chiefs and the Eagles and, and even the Steelers, frankly. So I'm with you there. And I think back to 2015, the first year under Kyle Shanahan, how, you know, I, I was sitting here like, is Kyle Shanahan the right guy? Like, should we fire him? Like, yeah. you know, we started off 5-0 and and all of a sudden the offense sucked. And I'm like, I, you know, but it takes usually at least two years or at least to later in the season for everything to start meshing. And like you said, you got to hit the ground running. So I think that is definitely a storyline not enough people are talking about because you got a lot of new pieces and it doesn't always come together immediately. I think for me, the offense has so many weapons it has Kirk Cousins it has an offensive coordinator that we like and it has one of the best offensive lines in football so I, I like all that the question to me is, is who's going to establish themselves as the two main receivers now that can be Drake London and Kyle Pitts that can be Drake London and Darnell Moody you know is Kyle Pitts going to look like Kyle Pitts from year one I think that's a huge question is Darnell Mooney was he you know kind of held back by the quarterback play in Chicago. These are things we're kind of assuming, but we need to see him on the field. We need to see it happen. Kirk Cousins is the best quarterback that these guys have played for. All can three Drake, of them. Can Drake London be a star receiver? Can he be a true number one that we're like, oh, that guy's 1,500 years. That guy's a Mike Evans. Like yeah. that's kind of, that. Drake London would always kind of remind me, big, big body, oh, yeah. also can create separation. He kind of reminds me of Mike Evans. Can he be a Mike Evans? Can, can Darnell Mooney be a true number two? Can Kyle Pitts be the star tight end that he was the first year? Those those three questions right there, I think with that receiving room are the biggest questions to me because there are no excuses this year. Like mm -mm. if Kyle Pitts goes out there and has 750 yards receiving, like we're going to look back at that fourth row pick and be like, damn, that was a crappy pick, especially with all the guys drafted behind him. Drake London, like we got to figure out this guy's the number one wide receiver and Darnell Mooney, kind of a question mark, kind of a wild card, could be a stud, could catch for over a thousand yards, could kind of be a struggling number two. Yeah, Zach Robinson has a lot. Zach Robinson, a lot on his plate. He's tasked 
with maximizing all of these different investments. And it, it's Kirk Cousins. The Falcons invested a lot of money in Kirk Cousins. The same goes with Darnell Mooney. A lot of people kind of criticize the Falcons that they overpaid for Darnell Mooney. And then in that same breath, Three top 10 picks on Bajan Robinson, Drake London, and Kyle Pitts. Kyle Pitts, obviously the highest drafted tight end in NFL history. It's time to kind of recoup some of that investment. And we haven't seen it yet. And there is no more excuses because of the things you just listed. It's a, There's a great offensive line in Atlanta. This is the best quarterback any of those guys have played for. Kyle Pitts, uh, Drake London, and Darnell Mooney. Kirk Cousins is the best quarterback. And I'm no disrespect to Matt Ryan. He was at the tail end of his career. He had a noodle for an arm. He still got it done. Kyle Pitts still almost broke the NFL record for a rookie tight end receiving yards. But... Matt Ryan was a shell of himself, and Kirk Cousins is up there in age, but Matt Ryan always had a stronger arm than Kirk Cousins, and Kirk Cousins hasn't lost a step at least with his arm. So I think that's a really, you know, it's a valid concern looking at those three guys in particular, the re the receiving threats. And I think more than any of them, it's Kyle Pitts' year where it's kind of like make it or break it. Uh, I, I, I've been making excuses, and they're not excuses, you know, because circumstances matter. He dealt with injury, and he came back a little bit too early, as everybody kind of thought, and he was catching passes from a tomato can, multiple tomato cans. Like, uh, nobody could have made him look good. Prime Calvin Johnson couldn't have made Desmond Ritter, uh, Marcus Mariota, and, and Taylor Heineke look good. So I think, you know, I, I'm it, the excuses are done is the point. Kyle Pitts, put up or shut up. Drake London, same thing. Drake London has not been mentioned in that same breath of Garrett Wilson and Chris Olave, who went after him in that draft. It's really just been about those two guys. Drake London has a lot to prove as well. If I had to ask you right now, sticking with those receiving threads, what, what do you, what, which one of the, these things is most likely to happen? Kyle Pitts, 1,100 yards, so most of the season, another Pro Bowl campaign from him. Drake London, 1,500 yards, Pro Bowl campaign. Or Darnell Mooney to catch over a thousand yards. Which one do you think is most likely? Most to happen? like Drake London. Drake London. Drake London. I, I I like. I think Drake London. I think Drake is London's going to turn some heads this year. I think Drake London is a true number one wide receiver. Now, obviously, we got to prove it, but th yeah. those are our thoughts. And, and I, I think, yeah. I mean, I think with Kirk Cousins, a guy who loves to force it to his yeah. top target, yeah. I think Drake London is going to. You know, people might be wondering here today, oh, who's the top target, Kyle Pitts or Drake London? I think Drake London takes takes that and says, hey, there's no questions about who the. Top I think target it's going to be clear receiver. immediately. Yeah. I, I think, I mean, that's a guy who, who was catching a thousand yards with those dummies at quarterback. Yeah. And he was making some great plays. Now he's going to have some opportunities with a guy who can put the ball in the right spot. I'm, I'm with you there. I'm, I'm hesitant on Kyle Pitts. I really hope I'm wrong. I really want him to come out. I mean, we all do, right? Yeah. The guy had so much talent and you hope that injuries don't just become like what help holds him back, but big year for Kyle Pitts and really this entire Atlanta Falcons offense.